Marvel's latest and biggest event was slated for 2020 and comes out about four months late. But Empire is coming, and it pits some of Marvel's biggest heroes against the combined forces of ancient enemies united against Earth in a book helmed by Marvel's biggest creative names. But what's happening, and what do you need to know? Why does this guy look like he's going to ask me to pod race for my freedom? Well, the answer to these things and more is coming in a few short moments on this episode of The Doomcast. <laughs> I'm Dan Umthen, welcome to the Doomcast. So who are the major players in Empire? The Avengers, Earth's mightiest heroes. Don't answer to a government, superpowered gods, monsters, patriots, billionaires, kings, and very athletic people. The Fantastic Four, Reed, Sue, Johnny, Ben, Valeria, and Franklin are Marvel's first family. Reed and Sue have questionable parenting skills, Ben just got married, Johnny is still single, Valeria is still smarter than her dad, best friends with her uncle Victor, and Franklin can still create universes at will because he's a mutant with the power of a god. The Kree are ancient science fascists, basically space Romans with great tech that have been an empire for one million years. Their religion is genetics and war, and for fun they do science and war also. Uh, they created the Inhumans, Captain Marvel, and the other Captain Marvel, uh, and have been at war with the Scrolls for hundreds of thousands of years. Yeah, what are the Scrolls? An even ancient or even science or even fascist or race of shapeshifters who used to be peaceful, but now they aren't, because the Korean and the Scrolls are like gravy and ice cream. They don't go together except when they do, which is now, I guess. Uh, the Scrolls can look just like anything they want to. Like a pack of cigarettes? No. Maybe? I don't know. The Super Scroll has the power of all the Fantastic Four at once, and one time the Scrolls secretly invaded Earth and things went very badly for the Scrolls. Also for Earth. The Kotati are a lesser known sentient plant race from the Kree homeworld of Hala. They won the favor of the Skrulls by building a garden on a lifeless planet in a contest with the Kree, who instead built a cool city on the actual moon. Must have been a hell of a garden. Well, that started the Kree Skrull Party. And the thing about a Kree Skrull Party is a Kree Skrull Party don't stop. Also, the party is a war and it's lasted for a million years. The Kotati grow from seeds and can mimic other organisms, even down to their memories and skills. And so they did with the Swordsman, who is a former Avenger with a good mustache and very good sword skills. Sequoia is the Celestial Messiah, or whatever, uh, basically is the son of Mantis. Not that Mantis, the other Mantis. And the Swordsman, yes, the guy I was just talking about who is in Kotati form. Uh, what is he doing now? Hulkling is uh, Teddy Altman, also known as Dorek 8. He went to space in Al Ewing's run on New Avengers and found a space sword that made him the King of Space, a perfectly ridiculous title. He's half Kree, half Skrull, all Wiccan's boyfriend, and I think still, unless they broke up, I don't think so, uh, but he's somehow managed to combine the decimated forces of the Kree Empire and the Skrull Empire into a unified galactic empire that is now headed towards Earth, ready to really mess things up. So, what's happening next? Well, Empire One comes out today and I will drop a review just as soon as I can. What we do know is this is likely to have a lot spin out of it since this is a universe-wide event and it's going to affect every single facet of the Marvel Universe. It's also written by Dan Slott and Al Ewing, uh, both of them two of the best writers in the game at the moment, so this is a perfect jumping on point if you've been out of comics for a little while. So thanks everybody for watching, this has been the Doomcast, we'll see you next week.